Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about position of a point with respect to a circle. If we are given the general equation of a circle and the coordinates of a point, how we are going to be able to tell whether the point is outside of the circle, on the circle or inside the circle. So let's see how to figure it out. Let's suppose we have a circle like this whose equation is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0 and the coordinates of the center are negative g comma negative f and now let's pick a point p for now i have picked the point outside of the circle but again p could be on the circle or even inside the circle so we really don't know where it is so i simply picked an arbitrary point p with coordinates x sub 1 comma y sub 1 now let's connect the point p with the center of the circle and let's suppose cp actually intersects the circle at point q and let's assume the coordinates of the point q are x comma y let's think about this distance cp the distance between c and p if this distance is greater than the radius then you can clearly imagine that the point p would be outside of the circle if this distance cp is equal to the radius then you can imagine that the point p will be on the circle and if the distance cp is less than radius then you can imagine that the point will be inside the circle now let's Let's try to calculate the length of this line segment CP because we know the coordinates of the two points I mean the coordinates of the point C which is the center of the circle and the coordinates of the point P that has been provided as x sub 1 comma y sub 1 we should be able to calculate the length of CP using the distance formula so it will look like this CP is equal to square root of x sub 1 minus negative g whole square plus y sub 1 minus negative f whole square and if we simplify this we can write it as square root of x sub 1 plus g whole whole squared plus y sub 1 plus f whole squared. Also we know that radius of the circle will be equal to square root of g squared plus f squared minus c that's based on the general equation. So now let's take the first scenario where cp is greater than r that means the distance or the length of cp is greater than r that means the point p will be outside of the circle. So if point p is outside of the circle then what is the necessary condition? Well the necessary condition is cp has to be greater than r that means for the point p to be outside of the circle the necessary condition is that length of cp will be greater than length of the radius the left hand side is the length of cp right hand side is the radius so cp has to be greater than the radius then p will be outside of the circle so essentially this is the necessary condition for p to be outside of the circle and now let's simplify this a little bit if we take a square on both sides we can say x sub 1 plus g whole square plus y sub 1 plus f whole square would be greater than g square plus f square minus c and if we expand the whole squares we can say x sub 1 square plus 2g x sub 1 plus g square plus y sub 1 square plus 2f y sub 1 plus f square will be greater than g square plus f square minus c and then you see we have a few quantities on both sides that will cancel out each other for example the positive g squared they will cancel out each other on both sides of this inequality and similarly positive f squared will also cancel out so then we are going to be left with something like this x sub 1 squared plus y sub 1 squared plus 2g x sub 1 plus 2f y sub 1 and then I brought the negative c onto the left hand side so that became positive c and all of that will be greater than 0 and that is the necessary condition for the point p to be outside of the circle. So if we are provided with the general equation of a circle and the coordinates of a point we can quickly plug in the coordinates of the point into the general equation of the circle and we can evaluate the left hand side value and see if that value turns out to be positive then we know that the point is outside of the circle. So on the left hand side expression of the general equation if we plug in the coordinates of the point p and then we evaluate the value of that expression and if that turns out to be positive then we know for sure that the point p is outside of the circle. I hope things are clear up to this point. Now let's think about the minimum distance and the maximum distance of p from the circle. If you think about it for a moment what is the nearest point on the circle to p well that point will be actually q that will be the nearest point on the circle so the minimum distance between p and the circle would be the distance pq and what would be the maximum distance 
if we extend PC all the way to the other side of the circle, let's suppose that it meets the circle at point R and let's suppose the coordinates of the point R are X sub 2 comma Y sub 2. Those are unknown of course, we have to calculate them. However, the maximum distance between the circle and the point P would be this distance, the distance PR and that will be actually equal to PC or CP plus CR and again CR is nothing but the radius of the circle and we already know the radius because the equation of the circle has been given. So, the maximum distance between the circle and the point P will be PR and the minimum distance between the circle and the point P will be PQ. So, here we can say that minimum distance between point and the circle will be equal to PQ and what is PQ? Well, if you think about it, PQ is nothing but CP minus CQ and CQ is nothing but R. So, I have written that as CP minus R. We already know the value of R because we have been provided with the equation of the circle and we have also been able to calculate the length of CP based on the coordinates of the center and the coordinates of the point P. So, CP is known to us, R is known to us. That means, we can easily calculate this minimum distance which is CP minus R. And what would be the maximum distance between the point P and the circle? Well, that will be equal to PR and that can be written as PC plus CR and we have already calculated the distance between C and P. The CP distance has already been calculated and CR is also known because that's the the radius of the circle. So, then PR will be equal to R plus CP or CP plus R. So, then PR can be written as CP plus R. Next, we are going to see how to calculate the coordinates of the nearest point on the circle, which is in this case the point Q. To calculate the coordinates of the point Q, we can easily use the section formula because we know the coordinates of C, we know the coordinates of P and we know the distance CQ which is nothing but the radius and also we know the distance PQ which is CP minus R because we know the distance of the two segments and we know the coordinates of the terminal points, then we should be able to use the section formula to find out the coordinates of the point Q. Using the section formula, we know that the x coordinate of the point that divides a line segment into m is to n ratio, the x coordinate can be written as m times x sub 2 plus n times x sub 1 over m plus n and similarly the y coordinate can be written as m times y sub 2 plus n times y sub 1 over m plus n. In this case, we can consider the coordinates of the center to be the x sub 2 and the y sub 2 and also the section m can be considered as the pq distance and that is nothing but cp minus r and the section n can be considered as the cq distance which is nothing but r the radius and if we plug in the values then the x coordinate of q will look like this and if we simplify that a little bit it is going to look like this. Similarly, let's see how the y coordinate going to look like. If we plug in the values here, the y coordinate of the point Q going to look like this. And if we simplify that a little bit, it's going to look like this. So, this is how using the section formula, we can easily calculate the coordinates of the nearest point on the circle. In this particular case, that point was actually Q. If you look at these values of the x and y coordinates of the point Q, you will clearly see that we know the value of z, we know the value of r, we know the value of cp and we know the value of x sub 1 and we know the value of y sub 1 and we know the value of f also. So, we should be able to easily calculate the value of x and y which are the coordinates of the point Q which is the nearest point on the circle from the point P. Next, let's talk about how to find the coordinates of the farthest point on the circle from the point P. And in this case, we saw in the diagram that the farthest point on the circle would be the point R whose coordinates have been assumed to be x sub 2 and y sub 2. And in that case again, we should be able to use the section formula to calculate the coordinates of the point R because we already know the coordinates of the center, we already know the coordinates of the point Q and center is the midpoint between Q and R. So, we can easily calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2 using the section formula. I am going to leave that for you to try. You can assume that C is the midpoint between QR. Obviously, C will be the midpoint because it is the center and QR is a diameter. We know the coordinates of Q. We know the coordinates of the center. We have to find out the coordinates of the point R. You can use the internal section formula or the external section formula, whichever is easier for you. You should be able to calculate the coordinates of the point R, which are X sub 2 and Y sub 2. Next, we are going to take the second scenario where CP is equal to R. That means, the point P is on the circle. 
Here again, using the same concept, we can derive the necessary condition which will look like this. Previously, x sub 1 squared plus y sub 1 squared plus 2g x sub 1 plus 2f y sub 1 plus c was greater than 0 when p was outside of the circle. Now, in place of that greater than sign, if we use the equal sign, then ultimately we will come to this particular equation which is the necessary condition for the point p to lie on the circle. Is the exact same derivation just in place of the greater than sign I am using the equal sign. So, Cp being greater than R or Cp being equal to R that is the only difference, but ultimately the derivation will be exactly same and you will find that x sub 1 squared plus y sub 1 squared plus 2g x sub 1 plus 2f y sub 1 plus c will be equal to 0 when Cp is equal to R. So, this is the necessary condition for the point P to lie on the circle. Now, what is the minimum distance between the point P and the circle? Well, because the point P is on the circle, the minimum distance would be equal to 0 obviously. And what is the maximum distance between the point P and the circle? Well, that will be the distance across a diameter on the other side of the circle. So, that distance will be actually the diameter of the circle and we can say that the maximum distance will be equal to 2 times the radius. We already know the value of radius because we have been provided with the equation of the circle. So, we should be able to calculate the length of the radius and then maximum distance between P and the circle in this particular scenario will be just 2 times r. Next, what would be the coordinates of the farthest point on the circle? Well, that point is obviously the point r and we should be able to easily calculate the coordinates of the point r because we know the coordinates of the point P, we know the coordinates of the center which is the midpoint between PR. So, using the section formula, we should be able to easily calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2. Just simply use the section formula, consider C as the midpoint. We already know the coordinates of C which is the center, we already know the coordinates of P which is already given and then using the internal section formula also, you should be able to calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2. I have already created a separate video on the section formula. I have shared the link in the description. Feel free to watch that video and using the section formula, we should be able to easily calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2. Next, let us talk about the third scenario where the point is inside the circle and in that case, what is the necessary condition? Well, the necessary condition is that the distance Cp has to be less than the radius. Then only P could be inside the circle. And if we do the derivation using the general equation of the circle, we will get the necessary condition exactly like this. Here, in place of the greater than sign or the equal sign, I am using the less than sign. So, the expression that we got x sub 1 square plus y sub 1 square plus 2g x sub 1 plus 2f y sub 1 plus c less than 0. This is the necessary condition for the point P to be inside the circle. So, taking the left hand side expression of the general equation of the circle, if we simply plug in the values of the coordinates of the point P, then the value that we get, if that value is negative less than 0, then we can conclude that P is actually inside the circle. And when P is inside the circle, what would be the minimum distance between P and the circle? Well, that will be the PQ distance and PQ will be actually CQ minus CP. And what is CQ? Well, CQ is nothing but the radius. So, we can say that will be radius minus CP. We already know the radius. We have already calculated the distance between C and P. The CP distance is known already. So, here we plug in the values, then we can say minimum distance between P and the circle will be R minus CP. And then what would be the maximum distance? Well, the maximum distance will be the distance PR and that will be equal to CP plus CR. CR is nothing but the radius, so we can say that will be radius plus CP. Next, let us see what would be the coordinates of the nearest point on the circle. Well, the coordinates of the nearest point on the circle would be the point Q and its coordinates have been assumed to be x comma y and we can easily use the section formula because we know the CP distance and we know the radius of the circle. So, essentially we know the PQ distance and then we know the coordinates of the P and coordinates of the C. So, we can easily use the section formula to calculate the coordinates of the point Q which are x and y. And similarly, using the section formula, we can also calculate the coordinates of the farthest point on the circle which is the point R. Its coordinates have been assumed to be x sub 2 comma y sub 2. Just use the section formula to calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2. Because we know the CP distance, we know the coordinates of P, we know the coordinates of C the center and using the internal section formula, you should be able to calculate the value of x sub 2 and y sub 2. 
and one other point I want to quickly discuss that if the CP distance is equal to 0 then you know that P is nothing but the center that means P is inside the circle and its coordinates are exactly equal to the center and in that case CP distance will become 0. So if you ever find that CP is equal to 0 then you know that point P is actually coinciding with the center. I hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.